Hello, hello, and welcome back to The Real Talk. The show where we talk about all things film and TV. As always, we're your hosts. I'm Callie. I'm Redmond. And you better stay tuned, because we have some amazing stuff coming up for you. Should we tell them? Um, yeah, I think we should. Up first, we have new to Netflix, where our correspondents, Ingrid and Ryan, dive deep into the recently added on Netflix and tell you what you do not want to miss in the next coming months. Then it's the part of the show where we talk about the people who have helped to influence and shape the film and TV industry. Next up, Then versus Now, where we take to the streets. And social media. Yes, and social media, to find out whether the general public, public prefer remakes or originals. This is followed by Into the Spotlight, the part of the show where we investigate how streaming services like Netflix have revolutionised television and brought TV and films into the spotlight. Gosh, that was awful. And finally, in real talk fashion, we are celebrating the Oscars with our very own reward. Yes, the real Oscars. Original. Yeah, real original. And of course we have the real list, as usual, where we count down to our favourite films and TV this week. Speaking of, should we find out what the first on the list? I think we should. Here's number five on the real list. At number five on the list we have the 1991 classic Silence of the Lambs. It was directed by Jonathan Demme and it stars Anthony Hopkins as Hannibal Lecter and Jodie Foster as Clarice Starling. It's won many awards including Best Picture and Best Actor in a Leading Role. That's why it deserves number five on our list. I'm going to be honest with you, I have never watched Silence of the Lamb. I've never watched it either. Oh, never. That's good then, that's good that I'm not the only yeah, one. I'll look into it, I'll look into it, we'll see how it is. But enough of that, it is now the part of the show where we talk about to our correspondents about what's coming to Netflix soon. It's news Netflix. So, welcome Ingrid and Ryan to the studio. Hello, thanks guys. Hello. Mm -hmm. So tell us, um, what have we in our audience, what should we be looking forward to in the next coming months? Well, uh, there's some fantastic things coming on uh, Netflix. So the, the highlights at the minute, we've got the Patriot Act with Hassan Minaj has been ongoing as well. That's been fantastic. Arrested Development comes back for a fifth season. Genuinely very excited about that. I've lost sleep. I am so excited. Uh, <laughs> Kung Fu Hustle comes on to Netflix uh, midway through this month. It's kind of a, a Kung Fu pantomime. Uh, and we've got the Santa Clarita uh, diet comes back as well this month too, which would be brilliant. But the ones I want to talk about are Scooby-Doo and Scooby-Doo <laughs> 2, uh, Monsters Unleashed. So both these films were released uh, quite a few years ago in 2002 and 2004, new to Netflix now. Um, it kind of it follows the, the Scooby gang, uh, Monsters Inc. as they investigate uh, mysteries and solve uh, the more eerie things that are going on there. But it also stars um, Sarah, Sarah Michelle Gellar and Freddie Prince Jr. The reason why that's interesting is because Sarah Michelle Gellar, fresh off Buffy the Vampire Slayer at the time the film was released, and she plays Daphne, who in the cartoons was um, the kind of character who gets kidnapped all the time, mm. the damsel in distress. So they've, uh, they recode that character, casting Sarah Michelle Gellar, and they do something wonderfully interesting with her there. So check that one out. Awesome. And if you like mysteries, you're probably going to love The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. It's coming up with the second season. The first season proved to be very, very exciting, very good. And this is, a, uh, you need to be aware, this is an obscure version of the traditional Sabrina, the Teenage Witch comics. It also uh, became uh, the 90s TV show. It was very lighthearted and sweet. But this is this is dark. And we all loved it. Uh, Sabrina Spellman is currently being played by... Um, Sharon and Kipman, and then the, the same thing is, this is a story about a half witch, half mortal individual, but she's living this secret life, so it's, it's going to be very exciting, and it's coming up on the 5th of April, so watch out. Uh, on a slightly lighter note, of course, we've got Bro uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine coming back for a fifth You're season on, on, uh, on Netflix. Uh, possibly one of the funniest TV shows around at the minute. Certainly one of the most, most interesting. Um, we've got Cancelled in America. The fan community loved it so much. Another network picked up for a season six that's currently airing. So before season six finishes, check out season five on Netflix. So if you don't know what it is, um, it's uh, a group of Brooklyn detectives uh, in the NYPD, uh, various sort of characters. Uh, they investigate crimes. It's kind of like a sitcom. Uh, based in the police department. It stars Andy Sandberg, who is brilliant in it, uh, along with um, Melissa Fumaro, uh, Terry Crews is great in it, um, and Chelsea Perez is also fantastic. It's witty, it's humorous, it's very imaginative. Uh, it's really, really popular, so check that one out as well. And you <coughs> cannot miss Orange is in your Black. It's coming up for the last 
last season ever, his seventh season, is unfortunate uh, because uh, well, there, there is been so many stories here within this. It is uh, based on a true story. Uh, Piper Kerman <coughs> was in prison of 15 months. And in, in there she found these all, all these stories about women. And these are true. But it, also the series is trying to tell about how is the justice system how it's not working very well. So this is very entertaining. It is telling you all the things you need to know about it. Seasons one to six in Netflix available now. No release date yet. I'd also I love Orange is the New Black. The first few seasons were fantastic. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. One of my highlights is coming out um, out today. Actually, it's uh, it's the Afterlife. So that stars it's written, directed, and stars Ricky Gervais. Uh, obviously, we know him from The Office and Extras and Hollywood. He's a massive star, brilliant, funny comedian. He plays Tony, uh, whose life absolutely falls apart after the death of his wife, and he decides to punish the world by kind of doing whatever he wants to do. He doesn't really care about the con consequences. Um, I think many people will be thinking it's more comedy, but it looks to be a bit more dramatic as well. So it's going to touch, tug on the heartstrings. Um, thanks to Instagram poll, a whopping 71% of you guys out there um, are really looking forward to it as well. Well, those all sound amazing. <laughs> yes. I'll definitely be checking those out and make sure you do. Thanks to Ingrid and Ryan for joining no us. Thank you. <laughs> We've also been talking to Instagram to find out what you guys are currently watching. And the most popular answers were Elite, Mindhunter, Umbrella Academy and Haunting of Hill House. They all sound mm. amazing. They're all coming out on Netflix now. So make sure you check out the shows and keep look out for shows coming out soon. Now here is number four on the real list. Enjoy. At number four on the list we have Brooklyn Nine-Nine. This stars Andy Samberg, Melissa Fumero and many more actors. It's had loads of directors over its five year span and has won two Golden Globe Awards including one for Best TV Series. This is why it deserves number four on our list. I really enjoy Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Like, honestly, it's one of my favourite TV shows. I, I will tell you that now. I've never watched it. I've never have. There is something wrong with you. I'm sorry. Anyway. Not a lot of us have time to just sit in and watch Netflix. Some people have stuff to do. All right. <sighs> now, it's part of the show where we discuss the brilliant people who have influenced the film and TV industry with Ingrid and Ryan. This week, we are discussing the three Mexican directors who have been taken Hollywood by storm. Well, these icons are none other than the three amigos, Guillermo del Toro, Alfonso Cuaron, and Alejandro González Iñárritu. So tell us, what do they do within the industry? Is it just directing or is there screenplay, screenplays? Yeah. Script writing, I was meant to say. <laughs> well, they've all had uh, a range of jobs, yes. They all kind of write their own materials. They've been producers and editors, uh, but one thing they do have in common is that they're all Mexican directors and possibly the best directors in the world at the minute as well. Um, what do you like about their works? Because like, they are quite unique, aren't they? They are very, yes, very special. They <laughs> are, no, they, indeed. So the, the three of them have in common that they're trying to write, raise up the minorities coming from a country that is very, it was poor intellectually and economically. They're trying to raise people and that's very nice because they're trying to leave, nowadays they're trying to leave a little bit of the commercial stuff, uh, which is great. And they are very creative. They started with nothing and they are all very creative. So when they have a budget such as in Hollywood, uh, or Netflix on this occasion now, <laughs> they have the opportunity to show off their creativity. So they talk about the monsters inside. So that's perfect. Um, in your opinion, who is the best? Like, is, do you have a favorite? Well, <laughs> definitely without a shadow of a doubt, <laughs> it's Guillermo del Toro. I love his work. His work is sublime. So he's a Mexican filmmaker, he's a director. He started off uh, doing special effects and makeup as well, and he kind of migrated over in, into making his own films. His films are both English language and Spanish language. He does science fiction, he does mm. horror, he does beautiful romance. Uh, his films are always hauntingly wonderful, um, but it always has a recurring theme in that he tends to explore uh, war-torn areas, and there's always a monstrous male or patriarch who kind of dominates everybody else and a young child or particularly a young girl has to overcome the oppression of the man in order to find herself. Uh, so my particular favourite of his is Pan's Labyrinth mm -hmm. and I can't recommend people watching that uh, enough. It got 22 minutes of standing ovation where it aired at Cannes Film Festival quite a few years ago and it is a sublime piece of work. I love his shape of water by mm. the way. Yeah. <laughs> I have a soft spot for Cuaron, if, if I'm quite honest. Uh, Iñárritu has beautiful words. He gave Leonardo DiCaprio his first Oscar, so The Revenant it has, has to be watched. Uh, also, beautiful from Iñárritu, beautiful. But Cuaron, if you have the chance to go on Netflix, watch Roma and hear Roma, it will be fantastic. <laughs> uh, also, Gravity um, for Cuaron. 
Definitely. I would add for Coran as well, in that uh, so Roma was a Netflix original show, uh, a Netflix original film. It got wide distribution in cinemas. It's kind of changing the game for how Netflix is showing their films on Netflix and cinemas at the same time. Won multiple Oscars for it. Beautiful cinematography, and he seems to be the, at the forefront of the changing nature of media at the minute. Well, thank you for that. That was very interesting. And very inspiring as well. As always. Indeed, but it's that time again. Yes, you guessed it. Here's number three on the real list. Number three on our list, we have End of the F***ing World, directed by Jonathan Entwist and it stars Jessica Barden, Alex Lawther and Steve Oram. It's won many awards including a BAFTA and a Best Drama Series. That's why it's number three on our list. I've never, literally, I've never even heard of that. Like, have you not? No. It is so good. I watched the whole season in one night. Oh, I don't know how I did it, but it is worth the watch, I promise you. But I do have a question for you. Okay. Remakes or originals? I do prefer originals, but there have been some really good remakes, I'll mm. admit. There have been. In my experience, originals have always been the yeah. best. So... Uh, Should I say? Yeah, right. Should we okay. both say it? We both say it. Yeah. Run, Run VT. VT. Do you like films? I do like films, yes. Uh, do you prefer originals or remakes? I prefer remakes over originals. And do you have a favourite remake? Uh, Blade Runner 2049. Uh, any reason why? Uh, I felt like the new angles and more upgraded technology that they have now made it better than the original because it had lots more colour and vibrance which was like a big deal from the first Blade Runner as well as the new camera techniques that we've developed and post-production is a lot more of a cinematic experience than the first one. Awesome, thank you very much. You're welcome. Do you like film? Yeah. Uh, do you prefer remakes or originals? Originals. Uh, do you have a favourite? It. Any reason why? Um, because it was good, better. Do you like film? I love film. Uh, do you have an opinion on originals versus remakes? I think generally the original is better because a lot of the time remakes are just cash grabs based on the title, but I think there are examples of good remakes. Like um, a, a, a bad remake that's just for the title would be the Total Recall from like 2009. That's a really bad film but a good remake would be the 1983 Scarface, that's a remake of the Howard Hawks film, and uh, the 1983 one is actually, I would say, a superior film. And do you have a favourite remake? Probably Scarface. It's just, I, I think it's a really good update to the idea, brings it to a new de uh, generation, a new decade really well. It's a brilliant film all round. I love films. I think they're an important part of our culture. Do you prefer remakes or originals? I think it depends on the production. Um, there are... Uh, there are productions that are the originals better, but I think there are ones where the remake is far superior. And would you give us an example? So, uh, there's what a remake that I preferred over the original is David Fincher's The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Why? Um, I think his uh, visual style of filmmaking um, is something that I've always been attracted to, and that's no different with, with The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Uh, yeah, I like film. I watch quite a lot of films. It's what I do in my spare time, really. Normally, I tend to prefer the originals just because they're classics. However, there's one exception to that, and that's with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I don't really know why I prefer it, but with the remake, I just, I don't know, I just prefer it. See, I do like remakes, though. Mm, I, I love the Jungle Book remake. Have you seen? Yes, that is, that is very good. really good remake. It is a big argument amongst our society. Uh, that is true. Remakes for originals. True. We'll never know. Yeah. We also run a poll on Instagram to find out 63% of you of you guys are excited to see the new Lion King remake. <gasps> That's got Beyonce in it, hasn't it? That's the one. She plays Nala. Yeah. Mm, oh. I'm still not sure about it. I'm not. It's got Beyonce in it. <laughs> we also run a poll on Twitter asking people whether they preferred remakes or originals. The results were surprising and showed a 50-50 split. It's clear that you prefer it's down to personal pre preference. And although remakes sometimes get a lot of hate, they can sometimes be good or better than the original. Well, after that, I bet you're just dying to know what is number two on the real list. So, here it is. Enjoy. At number two on our list, we have Black Mirror. It contains a highly talented cast and it was written by Charlie Brooker with many directors. It's won six Emmys, including an outstanding TV movie. That's why it should be on... Have you not watched it? No, I've seen a lot of it. I've just never thought to watch it. Mm, they do mess with your head. Oh. They are very creepy. Okay. 
Now, it's the part of the show where we shine a light on what streaming services like Netflix have done to revolutionise TV. Yes, you guessed it, it's Into the Spotlight. Run BT. I think the television industry has been completely turned upside down by the arrival of the internet. Uh, it didn't happen overnight. Uh, the internet's been with us since about, properly since about 1995 or so. But now, more recently, with the arrival of streaming platforms, television is not what it used to be. It's not the television in the corner of the lounge. It's not the box in the, in the corner of the living room that your parents might have been used to. Television is something different now. In fact, a lot of people don't recognise the word television. Television is content, it's media, it's a streaming platform. These words are not television anymore, but essentially it's the same thing, it's just not what we understand by using that word. One of the biggest things about television consumption is that less people are watching TV, and it's a major, major worry to the BBC, ITV, Channel 4. These are businesses, huge organisations that rely on viewers. They rely on viewers to sell adverts to, they rely on viewers to pay licence fees to uh, get people to watch uh, their content. But if less people are watching television, then these broadcasters become a little less relevant and a little worried that the competition, by way of Amazon, Netflix, uh, more recently we'll be seeing much more of Google and Facebook competing for those same eyeballs. So the arrival of streaming platforms, the arrival of the internet, the arrival of the web, the arrival of this different form of media consumption is turning things upside down on many, many, many levels. It's, people write books about it, it's a huge question and it's of huge significance and it's happening every day. We're living a revolution. Given that most people can watch television, BBC, ITV, Channel 4, on demand, on streaming platforms, without a licence, without it costing them anything, then the BBC is in a real pickle, because if people stop paying the licence, they don't get the money to make the programmes. And the BBC has responded in a number of ways. When the BBC first noticed that people weren't watching television on television, they did a number of things. The first thing was to move one of their channels devoted to young people online. They took it off broadcast, scheduled TV, uh, and they put it as a website. And that was great. It's been very, very successful. And in fact, often some programmes become so popular on, online on BBC Three that they then migrate back onto television and it's become quite a nice thing. There'll never be a shortage of demand for the moving image. Um, going to the cinema has never been more popular. You think, hold on, Netflix is around, you can watch anything you like from the comfort of your own home. More people are going to the cinema than ever before. Why? People like stories, they like shared experiences, they like the occasion and the event. Um, it's the same with television. Television is going through huge changes, but people are watching lots of television. They might not call it television, they may not think it is television, they certainly might not be paying for it as television, but on their phone, on their mobile, on their computer, it is the moving image. This means that the demand for moving images, the demand for people to make moving images for the screen is only rising. We also wanted to know what you guys such at home think of streaming services such as Netflix. After a staggering amount of replies, when asked on a scale of 1 to 100 how much they like Netflix, the average answer was 100%. Well, you all seem to love Netflix. Now, it's the moment I'm sure you've all been waiting for. It's number one on the real list. I wonder what it's going to be this week. Well, let's find out. Here's number one. Coming in on number one on our list, it stars Asa Butterfield and Gillian Anderson. It was directed by Kate Herring and Ben Taylor. That's right, it's Sex Education. Sadly, it's won no awards yet, but we like it, so it's at number one. So, I've never watched Sex Education. Oh my God, you have to. When you get home, 
you put it on straight away. Understand? Yeah, no, I'll think about that one. Welcome back. That was an in interesting number one. We've decided here at Real Talk that we want to celebrate the Oscars by hosting our very own award show, The Real Oscars. And even though we think the winners of this year's Oscars are well deserved, we still wanted to give some recognition to other films and actors who we think were incredible too. So let's get into the awards. <laughs> The first award of the real Oscars is for the best picture and we are awarding it to the Black Klansman, the comedy based on the incredible true story of Ben Stiller. I really hate those black rats and anyone else really that doesn't have pure white Aryan blood running through their veins. I'm happy to be talking to a true white American. God bless white America. The next award is for best animated feature and the award goes to Incredibles 2, the long awaited superhero sequel adored by old and new fans. Bye, sweetie. I'll watch the kids, no problem. And now it is the award for the best sound editing, and it goes to A Quiet Place, the post apocalyptic science fiction horror film starring Emily Blunt and John Krasinski. Infinity War, the epic superhero film that features all your favourite heroes teaming up together to fight Thanos. But this <laughs> does put a smile on my face. Best actor in a leading role goes to Bradley Cooper, the star is born. Best actress in leading role is awarded to Lady Gaga, a star of Bob. Here at Real Talk, we thought their performances were outstanding. All you gotta do is trust me. That's all you gotta do. Well, that was an amazing show. It's over already? I'm afraid so. Time flies when you're having fun. Very true. So thank you all for tuning in. Yes, also a huge thank you to our guests, Ingrid and Ryan, and of course, our correspondents out in the world. Thanks to the crew also, and also you, our lovely audience, for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed our show, and from everyone here at Real Talk, have a good rest of the week. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>